All right, this one is avoid obstacles. So you're given an array of integers representing coordinates of obstacles situated on a straight line. Assume that you're jumping from the point with coordinate 0 to the right, you are allowed only to make jumps of the same length represented by some integer. Find the minimal length of the jump enough to avoid all obstacles. Nicely, they've given us a diagram there as well. So this first part, I'm just going to explain the theory behind it all, and then I'll just get on to the solution in the for loop. So what we need to do is we need to find basically the integer, which the result here is 4, um, to basically skip all of these numbers and get past them all. So if we do console.log, just doing it to explain, and then our first element is 5. We're going to use the modulus operator, and then we're going to put it in the for loop, and the i is going to be incrementing by 1 each time. So the first i would be 1. We'll run the test, and the result which we get is 0. So what we're going to do with an if statement is we're going to say if it is equal to if it's not equal to zero, then we know that it's going to miss. However, because we get a result of zero, we know if we was going to have the integer to be one, one is going to hit the element five. So the next one would be two. Because so we're incrementing i by one. So five and then the modulus operator and two our result is 1. So we know, because it's not 0, we know that 2 isn't going to hit 5. So then we go to the next element, and our next element is, yeah, is 3. Run the test, and we know that 2 isn't going to hit 3, and we get an output of 1, so it's not 0. However, if we hit 6 with the next element, the output is 0, which means we know that 2 is going to hit 6. So we increase i by 1 again, and we 2, 3. The first element is 5, because we're going to restart it all. Our output is 2, so it's not 0. We know 3 isn't going to hit 5. However, the next element is 3, and we know that 3 will hit 3, and the output is 0. So then we increase i by 1 again. So i is now 4, and then we go through each one. So 5 modulus 4, and the output is 1. So we know 4 isn't going to hit 5. We know 4 isn't going to hit any of them, because that is the, the answer. But we won't get a result of 0, so then we can return 4. Break out of our for loop, and that's our answer. So typing all this down, uh, we do 4, let i is equal to 1. And we know i has to equal 1 or higher, because we're... Um, we're moving across uh, this diagram, or this chart, or whatever. If i was to equal 0, we're not going to get anywhere. So i has to equal 1. We miss out the middle part of the for loop. And that's because we're going to do a return statement. So we're going to break out of the loop when we um, hit the criteria. If we wasn't going to break out the for loop, or we weren't going to do a return, then we'd get an infinite um, for loop, which we, we don't want at all. And then we are going to increment i by 1 each time. So then we have our if statement, and we do if input array dot every. So every element in the input array. And we're going to do elements uh, modulus i, which is literally just repeating what we've done earlier. Do some spaces. So modulus i, and then when that all returns, well, you could do this, because we don't want it to equal 0. However, by just doing element modulus i, the default is the default is not equal to 0. And then when it doesn't equal 0 for every element, we just want to return i. If we run the tests, we pass all of them, and then we submit, and then we correct. So that is the final solution.